Hello everyone, this is Reza Dorani. In today's video, I will show you how to build a leave request application in Power Apps. We will add a couple of user personas, employees and approvers. Employees will log into the application, create leave requests, and they can track where their leaves are in the approval process through a progress tracker that we will provide on the employee landing screen dashboard. We will also have an approver persona so that approvers can log in, look at their dashboard of approval tasks that are pending their response. So let's get started with the video, but first my introduction. Let's see how we can build a leave request application using Power Apps and SharePoint as a data source in this scenario. I have a list in SharePoint where I'm maintaining all the details of my leave request. I'm maintaining the title of the leave, the detail of the leave. I have a choice column in SharePoint wherein I am maintaining the leave types that a user can request. And in choices, you can also add emojis, which I have done in this case for highlighting the different types of leaves. I have the from date to date. I have my status column. Now, as part of my previous video around the approval process for this leave request application, I have already showcased how to build a leave request approval flow or two tier approval flow, wherein the leave request first goes to the user's manager and then goes to the HR admin for approval. And these were the choices that we had defined for the statuses of the leave. I also have columns wherein I'm maintaining the user's manager and HR admin information. These are person type columns in SharePoint and these columns I am populating from my approval flow itself. And the approval history is what I'm tracking right here under approval commands which is a multi-line text column. Now coming to my app, this is the landing screen for my app. So nothing special here is just an image, couple of buttons here to redirect the user to specific screens. Now there are two personas as part of this application. One is an employee persona and second is an approver persona. So from an employee standpoint, when an employee logs in, they can see all the leave requests that they have created in the system. So currently I have a couple of leave requests that I have created. I can select a specific item and look at the details of that item right here. So if I pick my sick leave request here, I can see all the details around this request. Plus I have the ability of going and creating a new leave request on the fly. From an approver persona, when I log in, any approval tasks that are created as part of this leave request application and that have been assigned to me as the approver, whether I'm playing the role of the manager or I'm playing the role of the HR admin, those approval tasks will be listed right here in the approval dashboard. And once again, the experience is very similar for the approver as well. If I select a specific approval request, I can see all the details associated with that request. And right here, I can go ahead and take my decision. So let's see how I built some of the key aspects of this application. So logging in as an employee, first is the landing screen. So how did I go about building this experience for the user? So I have this gallery experience right here that is showcasing all my leave requests. And I also have a form on the right hand side that is showcasing all the details of that leave request. So let's try and redesign this experience from scratch. Okay, so I've gone ahead and cleared up the gallery and the associated form. So first for me to insert a gallery, I will head over to insert, go to gallery. And in my case, I will pick the vertical gallery experience. I will position the gallery right here. And now to get all the items from my SharePoint list, which is already connected as part of this app. So for the items property, I will connect it to the leave request list. And I want to show only those leave requests that have been created by me because I'm looking at my dashboard. 
So for that, I will add a filter that says filter the leave request where the created by column, which is an inbuilt column in SharePoint, which gives me the information of the person who has created the item dot email is equal to user dot email. So this now will give me all the leave requests that I have created as part of this application. Now next, how do we style this gallery to look more like that card experience that I showcased earlier? First thing is you need to plan out how many records you want to show per column in this gallery. And for that, the gallery has a property called wrap count. Currently I'm showing one record per row. If I change this to two, it will show two records per row. So you can decide how many records you would want to show in a row. In my scenario, based on the real estate that I have, I'm going to keep it as two. In order to make a change to a gallery, I will click on this edit gallery icon, which selects the first item in the gallery, which is the template item. And now I'm free to make changes to the template of this gallery. And any change that I make, all the other items in the gallery will follow suit. For example, I do not want this icon right here. So if I delete this, this icon is gone and the same experience would be rendered across all the items of the gallery. Back to editing my template item for the title value. I'm going to just place it right here on the left and I want this to span the entire width of this template. Now, one way of doing this is by just dragging this and moving this all across another way to do this. So let's say if this was not across the width of the template, for this control, if I go to the width property, see it's hard coded to 264. And as I change the width, you can see the value changing. To make this responsive based on the width of the template, the simplest way to do this is parent dot template width. So whatever is the width of the parent for this control, which is the gallery, it will take the full width. And I want to center align the text. So I'll go to the home tab with this control selected and center align it for the other label as well. I can do exactly the same steps and I'll center align this. Now this image control is something that I do not need. So I'll go ahead and delete this, go back to edit the first item. So right now I have a couple of label controls. The text property for the first label control is showcasing the title. Now the text property for the second label control is showing the created by users information. I want to change this and I want to show the leaf type. So for that, I will select leaf type. It's a choice column. So dot value, and this will bring in the value of my leaf type. Next, I want to create another label control. So instead of adding a label and adjusting the width again, I can just select a control control C control V and I get an additional one right here that I can place at the bottom. Now for this one, I would like to show the from and the two dates of the leave. So for this, I will use this item dot from, and that gives me the from date. And you can change the formatting of this as well using the text formula. And I want to give the two dates. So from this date, I'm using a concatenation operation here and this item dot two. So that's going to give me the date range right here. Now I need more height. So I'll select the first item again, increase the height. Next, I want to show the status. Once again, same steps, control C, control V, create another label. I'm going to place this right at the bottom here. And for the text property for this label, I will select this item dot status, which is a choice column dot value. So it gives me the value of this item. Now here is where I would like to add some color coding to give a visual indicator to the user. As part of my statuses, I have the following options, declined, approved, and pending has two variations, pending HR manager and pending manager approval. For this label, I will head over to the fill property and give it a color based on the value of the status. And the way I can do that is 
I will use the switch function. So switch self dot text, which gives me the text contained in this label. If the text is approved, I would like to give the color dark green. If it is declined, I would like to give the color dark red, else I will give the color dark golden rod, which gives me that yellowish color for the pending requests. And if you observe here, it's gone ahead and applied that color coding based on the logic that I defined here. And for the text color, you can just go to home and right here, I can change this to white. So it's more prominent. Next, with my template selected, I want to create that card like experience. So for that, I will select the first item in the gallery, head over to insert, go to icons. And right at the bottom, there's a rectangle shape. So I'll pick this. I will place this rectangle on the top left corner. And to confirm this, I can look at the X position should be zero. The Y position should be zero. Now the width, I wanted to span the entire width of this item. So once again, parent dot template width. And for the height, parent dot template height. So it spans the entire gallery template. Now for this rectangle shape, for the color here, I will go ahead and fill this with white. I will ensure that the display mode for this is view. Because I want the other controls now to sit on top of this control in the gallery for the rectangle control, I will select the three ellipses, go to reorder and send to back. Now all those controls are sitting on top of that rectangle control. Next, to create spacing between the items in this gallery, there's an option here called template padding. So I'm going to give a little bit of padding here, let's say 20. And now if I just go and preview this app, you see it creates this card like experience. I have a background color that I have defined as part of my screen. I've given it a gray background color. And because I've given the background color of my rectangle is white, it kind of pops out now. And this looks like cards. As part of my leave request, I have a lot of information which is tracking the process of the approval. I have the status. I know who the manager is, who the HR user is. And I also know who the person who has created the request is. So let's see how we can add a visual indicator here of where we are in the process. So for this, once again, with my first item selected in the gallery, I will go to insert, go to media and insert an image. I will resize this image and place this image right here. Now for this image control, I want to populate the user who has created this request. So for the image property, because I'm in the context of this gallery item, I can use this item dot created by dot picture. And this will give me the picture of the user who has created this request. In this case, it's me. Now to create a perfectly rounded image, all you have to do is for the image control, ensure that the width, the height and the border radius are the same. So my width here, I'm going to make it 75. I'll keep the height as 75 and the border radius. I'll keep it as 75. And if I go ahead and preview the app now, I will see a perfectly rounded image. Next, I need the picture of the manager and the HR admin. So I will just copy this image control, paste it twice and position them right here. Now the second image is going to be the manager. So I'll change this to this item dot manager, which is a person type column again, dot picture. So this gives me the manager information. And for the HR admin information, I will use the HR person type column dot picture. So that is how it's applying the pictures here for the user, the manager and the HR admin. Now next, I want to show where we are in the process. I want to show the status. I'm going to add a few visual icons here. So to highlight the person who has created the request, I'll use the icon post 
which is right here. Make sure you have the gallery template item selected and then you do this so that this icon goes directly inside the gallery item. So I'll just reduce the size and place it right here. Next, I'm gonna copy this icon, paste it and place it right here. Now this is where I wanna highlight whether the manager had approved it or rejected it. So with this icon selected, if I go to the icon option, I have a check bag icon so I can show this if the manager has approved this or I can also show cancel if the manager actually went ahead and declined this. And if let's say the approval process is still ongoing, the user is yet to make a decision, I'll show the icon question mark here. So how do I change this icon based on where we are in the approval process? So for that, for the icon property, instead of hard coding this, what we can do is this. I can add an if condition to check the status value. So if this item dot status dot value. So if this is equal to approved, if the entire request is approved, that means the manager would have approved it. So in this case, I can show the check badge icon. So if I just close this function, you see it went ahead and placed the check icon. If the request is currently pending manager approval, that means the manager is yet to take a decision. So once again, I can add another condition here, which is if the value is equal to pending manager approval, then I will show the question mark icon. Let me close this. If there was any item here which was on that status, it would show the question mark there if it is pending manager approval. Next, I also have a pending HR approval status. And if it goes into pending HR approval, then it's rest assured that the manager has approved it because that's my process. It goes from manager to HR. So back to my app, I want to show the check badge if it is approved or the status is pending HR approval. Let me go ahead and format this formula so we can see this in one go. And if it is declined, that's my final case. What I can do here is for the second of condition, just go ahead and put the icon, which is cancel badge. So now if I preview this, I can see that this was approved, this was declined. Now I can also change the color of this icon based upon the status. So just like we defined the icon value based on the status, you can literally just copy this, go to the color property of that icon control, paste the same formula, and now start plugging in my colors. For the check icon, I'll give the color dark green. For the question mark icon, I'll give the color dark golden rod. And for the cancel icon, I will give the color dark red. So if I preview this, see, I've got that icon and the color associated with it. And now all I have to do is apply the same concept for the HR user as well. So I can select this, copy paste, literally just place it right here. And now for the icon property, a little bit of change in the formulas. So if it is approved, then guaranteed that the HR user has approved it. So that's in place. If it is in pending manager approval or pending HR approval. So now I just have to take this scenario and move it right here. If it's either of the two, then you put a question mark here because it's still pending this user's response. And if it is declined, then cancel. And I can do the same thing for the color property as well. I just have to move this condition of mine. It all depends on your scenario, but here's my use case. So I've just changed the formula. If I click preview, I can see all the responses right here. So that's how easy it was for me to create that progress type experience in the gallery so the user can see where the current ongoing approval process is in. And just to connect these together now, all I did was edit the template again, go to icons. Once again, I'll use the rectangle shape, reduce the height, connect all of them together here, and then push this to the back. So send to back. 
So it goes right behind even the white rectangle box. So I need to move it one step ahead. So reorder, bring forward, and that's it. If I now preview the app, here's the connections. I can see the entire flow going from user one to user two to user three, and I can see the status. And of course, you can add additional filters to them as well. I've shown that as part of a lot of my previous videos. I'll put those links in the description. So go ahead and check out those videos as well. Next, how do I show the details of the request in the right hand pane? I will go to insert, go to forms and use the display form. I'll place the display form on the right hand side here. I will increase the height. And for this, I will again connect it to the leave request list. And this will bring in some of my columns in. I will change this to a one column format and maybe I'll pick the horizontal style. So it gives me all the details right here. You can go to edit fields and pick the columns that I truly want to show. I don't want to show the approval link. So you can decide which columns you truly want to highlight right here. Once you're done with that, next step for me is to show the item. So the item is going to come from the gallery. So I'm going to copy the name of the gallery, go to this form control and for the item property, just use gallery dot selected. So it's going to show me the details. For the form control, I'm going to give it a background color of white. So it's prominently highlighted here. Again, looks like a card that's showing me all the information right here of the request. And to showcase which request is selected here in the gallery, for that rectangle shape that I added that sits right at the back, I can even define a border. So if I search for the border thickness property, right now it's set to zero. Let's change this to the following formula. If this item dot is selected, so if this is the selected item, let's put a border thickness of three, else zero. So let me preview this. You see the border is clearly highlighting what item is selected. If I select this, it sets the focused border thickness for this specific item, which is the selected item. And on the right hand side, I can see the relevant request details. Bear in mind, this is a form control. So you're free to make any changes here to any of the cards. So for example, my approval commands, it's kind of getting squeezed in here. So I can increase the height, unlock the card, move this control down here, move this control up here, increase the width, place this right here, increase the full width again, give it more height. I can even set this to auto height so it automatically adjusts. Now if I preview this, check this out, I can clearly see who declined it as well. If I select this record, I can see that both the users approved it. And the exact same scenario is what I replicated here when I log in as an approver. So the only difference here is the items property. Instead of filtering my leave request list where the created by user is me, now I need those leave requests that are pending my approval. So for that, I'm checking the status. If the status is pending manager approval, I'm checking to see if I am the manager. So for that, I've written the simple formula, manager.email, so person column is equal to the current logged in user's email. If they match, that means the current logged in user is a manager and at the same time, the status is pending manager approval. So I need to show that leave request here. Or if the status is in pending HR approval and I am that HR user. And that's why if I preview the app now, I can see all the requests that are currently in pending state for my response. And same concept again, if I select this, I can see all the details. One additional thing which was brought to my notice by one of my subscribers, thank you so much. Previously, I had given a button here for the approval process and when I clicked on that button, it directly took me to flow. And how did I get that link? In my SharePoint list, I'm also maintaining the approval link. I can also launch that panel and pass whether the user wants to approve the request or reject the request. So it will pre-select approve or reject. And the way we can do that is, if you notice, I've added two buttons here, approve, reject. So when I click approve, previously I was just launching the approval link. 
which I grabbed from Flow and stored it in my data source, which is SharePoint. But now I can also pass parameters to it. So launch this, pass the parameter response, this is case sensitive, and I'm passing the value approve, this is also case sensitive. And in case of reject, I'm just launching the link and passing the response as reject. Let's see what happens now. If I preview this app, if I click approve, check this out. It's gonna directly take me to Flow, launch the Flow approval panel and pre-select approve. They can optionally add commands. I'll say, okay, I'll click confirm. And this approval response now is successfully logged. So back to my app, because I've taken a decision, that record goes away. And for my other responses, let's say for this one, I reject this, it will again launch flow. Check this out, by default rejected. I'll just put in my command, click confirm, and this will go ahead and log the approval response. So that's how you can just simply pass a parameter and directly take the user to the exact context in flow. If you enjoyed this video, then do like, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And thank you so much for watching.